Are you sick of seeing people? Tired of having a lot of dating options? Want to wear sweaters and jackets most of the year? Keep watching. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. Today we're looking at our friends to the north again, Canada. I did a few videos on secluded towns here in the United States last year. I'm getting ready to do another one for the United States, but we started looking at secluded towns in Canada last month. They have so many that are so much further off the beaten path than the United States does, it's crazy. According to Canada's census, there is over 1,000 towns or villages. Some of them are out in the sticks with only about 5 or 10 people living there. We are only going to be looking at towns with at least 20 residents. Well, number 10 did, now they don't, but they have a really great story so it's on the list. I've been to none of these towns so the footage is limited. I just may have to show you where they are on the map and then have some random footage of the Canadian Outback. Not Australian, Canadian Outback. There, perfect. There's a lot of open land in Canada and a lot of distance between towns. We'll be doing a second video on secluded towns in the future, so if you have any suggestions, please let us know in the comment section. Alright, in no particular order, let's see what we found. Number 10, Little Bay Island. Little Bay Island is a nearly vacant town in Newfoundland, Canada, Newfoundland, Labrador area. It consists of six small islands, Little Bay Island, Mac Island, Goat Island, Harbor Island, and Boatswain Tickle Island. Boatswain Tickle? That sounds like a festival for kinky sailors. Anyway, in February of 1999, 55 permanent residents voted to be relocated and nearly all of the island's residents departed in late December of 2019. This was part of a relocation program operated by the provincial government for small communities that had become too expensive to service. You know, basically, they got to send all kinds of supplies out there and everything else like that. It just wasn't worth it for the small amount of people, so they offered them a deal. The property owners who were permanent residents were paid at least $250,000 in compensation for their property if they would leave. They did. All but two of them. They decided to stay to live off the grid installing solar panels and wireless internet. The couple who would decide to remain on the island, Georgina and Michael Parsons, told the news media in autumn of 2019 that they were prepared to live off the grid in their recently built home with a well providing drinking water and, you know, all kinds of stuff. They got solar panels, snowmobiles, cell phones. They even got a boat so they can get back to the mainland because ferry service was discontinued on January 1st, 2020. So, yeah, they were completely cut off. If they wanted to go someplace, they got to do it on their own. Number nine, Stony Rapids, Saskatchewan. This is one of those places where you have to worry about being eaten more than being a victim of a crime. They have almost 250 residents with the potential of that dropping lower every bear season. Is there an actual bear season? I don't know, it sounded good. Anyway, this place is out in the sticks. There's only one road out of town. It's unpaved and it goes to Black Lake, which is about 20 minutes away or two hours if a bear eats your tires. After that, you have Points North Landing, about 185 kilometers away or 115 miles. It's unpaved road and it's closed most of the winter. They also have one of those ice road trucker things going on in the winter to Uranium City. Yeah, you heard me right. It's called Uranium City. Stony Rapids relies on Stony Rapids Airport for all its vital transportation, including a lot of its supplies. The average high summer temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. That's in July. That's about as warm as it gets. They had like record high and it was like 82 degrees one time. The winters stay below zero most of the time with the harsher days sitting somewhere around minus 30 degrees Celsius, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Bundle up and gain some weight would be some solid advice for living in Stony Rapids. Number eight, Saks Harbor, Northwest Territory. Saks Harbor has about 90 full-time residents that live above the Arctic Circle. This is a great place to live if you hate warm weather, the sun, grass, trees, bushes, competitive games of hide-and-seek, and not eating seals. Yeah, they eat seals here and there's no bushes, no grasses, no trees, so, you know, hide-and-seek's completely out of the question. This place looks like a cold, dirt parking lot with an ocean view and a few houses. It's 500 kilometers from Inuvik, where they get most of their supplies by water or air in the summer, dog sled in the winter. It's the only permanent settlement on the world's 24th largest island, Banks Island. That's pretty cool. Saks Harbor is well above the Arctic Circle, meaning it gets days and days of darkness in the winter and days of days of sun in the summer. Just about everything the residents do in this community revolve around fishing, hunting, and travel. Travel means you get out of this place. Many of the residents have considerable knowledge of weather conditions, permafrost, and even erosion patterns. Yeah, so they live above the Arctic Circle and they're starting to notice that the sea ice has been breaking up earlier and earlier. 
taking the seals further south in the summer. Seals are, like I said, the main source of food for this town. And I've never had seal, but I imagine it tastes a lot like chicken. The town was named after the ship Mary Sachs, which was part of the Canadian Arctic Expedition in 1913. Yeah, 90 people live here. That's crazy. Number seven, Grease Fjord, Nanavut. The indigenous people's name for this place means the place that never thaws. That should tell you Grease Ford is a good place to own several pairs of thermal underwear. 129 people live in this town and they shouldn't. They have signs in the town warning you to look out for polar bears. They have cruises to this place. They're smaller cruise ships, less than a thousand people on board, but they're definitely cruise ships. If I took one of these cruises with my wife, I would see that sign and get us both back on the ship. This is the largest community on Ellesmere Island. The town also holds the distinction as one of the coldest inhabited places in the world with an average yearly temperature of minus 16 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's rough. The town was a settlement that was created by the Canadian government in 1953, partly to assert sovereignty in the high Arctic region during the Cold War. Eight families were relocated and promised homes and game to hunt, only to realize that there were no buildings when they got there and very little familiar wildlife that they were used to hunting. They were also told that they would be able to return home after a year if they wished, but this offer was later withdrawn as it would damage Canada's claim to sovereignty of the area. They were forced to stay, basically. They eventually learned about the beluga whales' migration routes and were able to survive the area. The houses are wooden and built on platforms to cope with the freezing and thawing of the permafrost. This place is crazy cold. I watched some videos of those small cruise ships going there, and yeah... Everyone's wearing, like, parkas. You only see their eyeballs sticking out of their jackets. It's pretty weird. Number six, Kageska, Quebec. Now, I hope I pronounced that right. I tried, and I couldn't figure out how to pronounce it. Anyway, in 1831, Kageska was the site of a Hudson Bay Company trading post, but the actual settlement was formed later in 1852 when settlers came from Magdalen Island. Later, the original settlers abandoned the place somewhere around 1871 to 73 and were replaced by Newfoundland fishermen, almost all all of Irish descent. They eventually abandoned the place too, but in 1898, a few families relocated from Perth, Ontario, and the descendants still live there to this day. Most of the people there are related to them some way or another. These days, the area attracts the outdoor types, drawn in by excellent hiking, wildlife, and sea kayaking. There's a bunch of motorcycle videos of people riding motorcycles out to this place. It's like one of those touring bike type destinations. They get on the road and they just take some forever to get there. The motorcycles with camping gear on it, that type thing. They have 92 permanent residents and this is one of those places that gets cut off from the rest of the world during the winter just about. Number five, Kiel's Newfoundland and Labrador. Kiel's is a small town in the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. This one sort of isn't far away from everything as much as how it's far away from anything that can be a legit town. They have a bunch of small villages with 10 to 20 people, but nothing real for at least an hour in good weather driving. Like many outport villages in Newfoundland, the population has been shrinking with the collapse of the cod fishing industry. Yeah, there's been a collapse in the cod fishing industry. The Atlantic fishery abruptly collapsed in 1993, following overfishing since the late 1950s. They had a warning sign in the 1970s with a partial collapse, but they didn't learn their lesson. 93, it finally failed. It's expected to recover to historical sustainable levels in 2030, so they got another 10 years of no fish in there. The community is somewhat of a tourist attraction because it is one of the smallest and oldest communities in Newfoundland. And because of the small beaches, it's perfect for collecting seashells, so people love to visit this place. I saw tons of videos of people going out to visit this place. And there's nothing to this little town. It's got a nice looking tea room. There's only 51 people that live here on the regular. Number four, Alert Nunavut. Alert is the northernmost permanently inhabited place in the world. Yeah, it's got 62 residents and it's only 500 miles from the North Pole. The only people that live here are soldiers and scientists. It gets more sun than any place else in Canada. In fact, it gets too much sun. Alert is well above the Arctic Circle, which means the sun doesn't really set all summer long. It experiences what they call the midnight sun from April 7th to September 4th, meaning there's always sun in the sky. I would need theater curtains, a sleeping mask, and a Darth Vader helmet just to get some sleep here. I need darkness to sleep. It's weird. And in the winter, it's just the opposite. You know, the time I could sleep. It stays dark from October 14th to about February 28th. The average monthly temperatures are only above freezing in July and August, with an average temperature of 38 degrees Fahrenheit during those two months. 
Number 3. Point Lance, Newfoundland and Labrador Point Lance is a town in the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. The town had a population of 102 residents in the Canadian 2016 census. It has a beach. Honestly, look at this. This is their entire Wikipedia page. That's exactly what it says. <laughs> it has a beach. You know, I did some research and yes, look at that. There it is. They do have a beach. They weren't lying. So it's about over a two hour drive in good weather from St. John's. And it's kind of on this point with nothing else going on. There's a couple other little villages with like 10 people in them. But St. <laughs> Point Lance has a beach. <laughs> you know, ridiculous. It has a beach. What kind of information is that? It has a beach. It's on an island. Of course it has a beach. Number two. Fort Nelson, British Columbia. Fort Nelson is named in honor of British naval hero Horatio Nelson. It was established by the Northwest Trading Company in 1805 as a fur trading post. Due to fires, floods, feuds, and lack of a beach worth bragging about, like Point Lance, this is Fort Nelson's fifth location. This has the largest population, I think, of any place on a secluded list I've ever done. They have just over 3,000 residents. If you want to drive to a bigger city, you're looking at around 11-hour drive out to Edmonton. Yeah, it's that far away. During World War II, Fort Nelson Airport was actually a military airport that was used by the United States and Royal Canadian Air Force. Times have been tough for Fort Nelson since around 2008 when all the forestry mills officially, you know, shut down. Then in 2014, oil collapsed along with the gas industry. So it's been rough and people have been flooding out of Fort Nelson for some time. The good news is real estate's getting cheaper every day. And number one, Watson Lake, Yukon. Watson Lake is a town in Yukon, Canada, located at mile 635 on the Alaskan Highway, not too far north of the British Columbia border. Watson Lake has been losing residents since the 1990 Canadian census. It shows no signs of that slowing down. They got nothing to keep people there. Keep trickling on out of there. The town is named after Frank Watson, an American-born trapper and prospector who settled in the area at the end of the 19th century. This place kind of cool. It has a tourist attraction of sorts called the Signpost Forest. In 1942, there was a simple signpost pointing out distances to various points along the road. The sign was damaged by a bulldozer. Private Carl K. Lindley, serving with the 341st Engineers, was ordered to repair the sign and decided to personalize the job by adding a sign pointing towards his hometown, Danville, Illinois. And then he gave the distance. It's just something people do in the military back in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam and stuff. Several other people added directions to their hometown, and the idea has been snowballing ever since. The signpost forest now takes up over two acres of land. All right, that's today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now you know where all the little towns are in Canada. Actually, you have no idea because there are so many little towns up in all these little different areas. It's crazy. I'd love to do another one of these. If this one gets enough comments, likes, and all that good stuff and views, we'll do another one. If you have any ideas for towns we could put on the next list, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, don't forget all the links below. Give the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.